part of part of part of the meaning of the word grace. If you look up the word grace in the Greek into English, the main meaning it says specifically, especially, and then there was a boils down to this: the word, the definition for the word grace, is God's divine influence on the heart and its reflection in what's called life. God wants to influence you with knowledge. He wants to give you information that can be found in your Bibles. And if you're not interested in that information, then your faith is shallow. Because faith comes by, ah, there's that word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So the more information that you can get and tuck away in your heart that you can remember is what the Holy Spirit uses in your life of faithing. Life is a journey of faithing. You know that, don't you? It's, it's, it's in motion. And if you have stopped learning, you have reached the highest level of your incompetence forever. It's the truth. You know, even big corporations will send even their executives, you know, to get refreshed in their own field. Because technology changes, and they want their leaders to at least be on top of the game. God wants you to be on top of your game because he wants you to know how he thinks, but he also wants you to know your enemy so that you can defeat your enemy. And there is an enemy out there that does talk to you inside of you, gives you thoughts, and gets you to listen. And you need to be really on top of your game so that you know the source of your thoughts. So what we've been doing here, uh, I've been doing pretty much for several whatevers now here, months, weeks, years, is something that I have coined continuing education. And we have to be very careful about education because education from the word can become vanity. It's really a serious defect when you know the word for somebody else, but you can't live it for yourself. Paul said this, what a tragedy, paraphrasing the words of Paul, what a tragedy if I teach everyone and they get the gospel and they get life and they get eternal life and I myself become a castaway. What a tragedy. I told somebody the other day in a little conversation, I hope they, and I told them this, and I don't think that they were, I don't know if they were saved or they were a Christian just acting like they were saved. I'm not sure that, about that person, because you never know these days. And I said, let me give you a reality check. And I said, I want to tell you something. No matter what happens to you in eternity, you will always remember what I'm about to tell you. Forever you will remember it. The greatest tragedy is to end up in the lake of fire forever with full knowledge of the truth. That is eternal insanity. You know, God's ability to teach us Many people want to be fixed. Many people want to be healed. Many people, many people, many people, many people. But when Jesus began to teach, he brought it down, right down to hello. And he welcomed the people. Hi, I'm Jesus. And we talk a bit. And before he ever healed the sick, did all the things that he did, he taught them the principles of the kingdom. Did you know that? He taught them. And that teaching opened their heart 
to truth that they needed. Then he moved amongst them and he represented the Father in healing and deliverance and all the rest of that went on in that time period. It is important that you know truth for yourself. It is essential that you know truth for yourself. The word says that you're to be a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But there are many voices in the world today, all saying, thus saith the Lord. There are many movements that are coming with this and with that. And really, rather than just it being the purity of God's word, it ends up being what we, I would call is diluted down to something called denominational catechism. Denominational catechism. You and I should be able to read the Bible. Well, it depends what translation you have. The confusion of tongues is here, folks. But you and I should be able to read the word and come to the same conclusion all together at the same time. Shouldn't we? Why? Because the Bible says the scriptures are not of private interpretation. So, when it says in, well, just for example, if we were to go over to, um, well, just take one, Isaiah 7, 14, the Father speaking, the Lord Adonai himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and shall bring forth a child, and you shall call his name Emmanuel, meaning God with us. That's what it says in the rendition from Hebrew into English in the Masoretic text. Or I could go down here to your local bookstore and put and pick a very specific Bible off the shelf, and I could go to Isaiah 7.14, and here's what you would read. The Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a young lady, a young woman. Now, is there a difference between a young woman and a virgin? Oh, brilliant! A+. plus. There's a big difference, isn't there? So they are tampering with the virgin birth of Christ. Even the Jews at, of that day didn't understand it. Why not? They were the religious leaders of their day. They didn't know Isaiah 7:14 and, and Judaism. Are you serious? They didn't see it because it, it, as it was supposed they called Jesus the son of Joseph, as it was supposed. That's how the scriptures read. They said, as it was supposed. Well, if Jesus was the son of Joseph, he could not be the son of God. He would be the biological seed of Adam. But he was not the biological seed of Adam, according to the flesh. So we get into the, the very issue of Jesus being conceived in the move of Mary by the Holy Ghost. Not as the Mormon church teaches. You know what the Mormon church teaches? The father came down and had sexual union with Mary and got Mary pregnant. That's what the Mormon church teaches. You, do you believe that? They're knocking on your doors in this city. Do you believe that? Today is a very sad day in the world. I'm probably on my soapbox, but so what? Somebody needs to be on a soapbox these days, at least say something. The Pope today, if you've checked the news. And by, the po by the way, the Pope is not a Catholic, he's a Jesuit. There's a big difference between a pope, between a Catholic and a Jesuit. A Jesuit is a sect, a 
Catholicism, a spin-off branch historically. Re do your research. The Pope has made a declaration concerning who you sleep with, whether you're married, you're not married, whether you're divorced, you're not divorced, whether it's male, 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 female, female. He has, as the vicar of Christ, as he says he is, has made a declaration that it no longer, who you sleep with, no longer, those people no longer have to obey the rules of the church but now they can follow their own conscience. So even the canon of Catholicism has been thrown out the window about this very big issue, and now the door has opened with the Pope's permission to sleep with whoever you want, married or unmarried, male or female, male, male, female, female. One of your presidential candidates is headed for Rome as I speak. To meet with the Pope. He says, I identify with how he thinks. I'm not at liberty to tell you who that is because I head up a nonprofit. Do your own research. That way you can't quote me as saying it because I want to protect myself for, for intrusion of the government of the United States of America by my speech. But I have said enough, haven't I? Enough to get you curious. But what the Pope also said is that he urges the world. Um, priests around the world to be more accepting of those and he's just calling those relationships um, that are, are not in line with scripture just irregular situations he's reduced it to irregular it's not sin anymore no it's just irregular but the approval of the church is now here now if you want to go back and study the history of mankind from adam and the dispensations of how God dealt with mankind. You can begin, of course, with the dispensation of innocence. That would be Adam and Eve. You had the fall, did you not? Then you had the dispensation of conscience. When every man did what was right in his own mind. Now you have situational ethics. It's not the word... It's your interpretation. Now, I'm not trying to stir this up. I'm just giving a news report. But you need to begin to pray that there be a remnant of God preserved in the earth. Maybe you're that remnant that God is speaking to that will not bend to the spirit of error that's now in the earth and in the church and in your government, and in the world. Now, why did I go off on this for? Because I felt like it. Is that a good enough reason? Grace is God's divine influence. Look it up in a Strong's Concordance. It's right there. I got one right up here. God's divine influence on the human heart and how that heart reflects in this thing called life, continuing education, continuing education. There are companies that are now boycotting two or three of our states as I speak because of their stand on the ability of people to stand true to God's word, and they call that discrimination. We're here, folks. Are you scared? You're going to compromise? You're going to sell your soul for a bowl of, bowl of pottage? Man who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. I just quoted you a scripture. If I could do intercessory prayer right now, I'd pray for all yellow spines in Christianity to turn white. That's not my subject tonight. Just a little update that you know how to pray. I'm not sure how to pray. I'll tell you how I'm praying. Lord, preserve the remnant and the residue of your people in the earth, that when the Lord comes, he'll find faith in the earth, and that's exactly what we need to pray. Don't go hide from heretics. 
Be bold. Be strong. The Lord your God is with you. Do we have that song? Where can that be found in your Bible? Isaiah who? Where? Isaiah 35. Do you know that Isaiah 35 is the seventh R to freedom in the eight R's to freedom teaching? Did you know that? Have you ever been around the eight R's to freedom teaching through being health? I want to ask you to listen. There's eight of them. The seventh is rejoice. 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 I used to, I heard a teaching years ago when I was cutting my teeth on being a believer by Jerry Seville. Maybe you've never heard of Jerry Seville. You've heard of Jerry Seville. Wow. There's a teaching he had years ago I never forgot. If Satan can't steal your joy, he can't keep your goods. If Satan can't steal your joy, he can't keep your goods. Say, the joy of the Lord is somebody else's strength. The joy of the Lord is... The joy of the Lord is... The joy of the Lord is... Where's that scripture, count it all joy when you fall into this and that? James who? And all these Bible students out here. I'm training them good. James 1 what? My brethren, that includes you cisterns. I don't leave you ladies out of this at all. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. I will like being tempted. You know, when you became born again, it didn't stop you from being tempted. Before you got born again, you were tempted and didn't even know it. Then you got born again, you're tempted and you know it. Is temptation fun? I know you wish you weren't tempted. Weren't, I know you wish you wouldn't have those thoughts. That, But what, what is this author saying? Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Divers meaning many, multifaceted. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire Wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men and ladies liberally and that braids not. That means God's not upset if you ask him what he thinks. And it shall be given him. Who? The one that asked God for wisdom. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Wow. I've seen so many people, when they start to believe and it doesn't happen, the minute they snap their finger, they just see them later. It should be called claim it and wait, not claim it. Name it and claim it, but claim it and wait. I said it should not be called name it and claim it. It should be called name it and wait. Do you know if God gave you the answer to every prayer, you would destroy it with your incompetence? Would you like God to form you on his terms, or would you like to form yourself on your terms? I want, listen, I've been in this thing for, let's see, wow, what a year is this? I've been in this thing for, yeah, 33 years. And I'm still learning. I'm still understanding things that I didn't understand 33 years ago. Or how about, are you still learning stuff? Do you want to learn? Do you ever ask God what he thinks? That's called prayer. Do you ever walk up to that two-way mirror and say, 
Hey, Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. Have a conversation with you? What do kids do when they put their, they put their nose right against the glass? What a wet mess that is. Sometimes we're back in the outer court. We're hovering on the inner court of all the vain oblations and all the stuff of Christianity and, and all the do's and don'ts and ups and downs and overs and unders. And we don't know that the veil has been rent and we can come and talk to our dad anytime that we want in Jesus' name and ask him what he thinks. A lot of people want a word from God these days. I see more people know more about your future than God himself. Why would you be interested in what another human has to say about your future? Why don't you just go to your father in prayer and ask him what he thinks? I've taught for many years, and because I teach and I do this and that, for some reason there are some people think I'm closer to God than they are. I'm not. God's no respect, God is no respecter of persons. Do you remember reading that? I don't have a greater in with God than you do. I may have spent a little more time inquiring of him. That had to be cultivated. It is difficult to have a relationship with somebody and you never show up to have it. So we, we approach God through subliminal perceptions. Either a process of uh, osmosis or diffusion or who knows what, a leaky faucet. Hoping we get some drips from heaven. Do you know that this, this application of faith is so simple? But you can't doubt it when you ask. Now, Everything that you ask, you don't say, well, if it be God's will. <laughs> there goes the doubt right there. Well, I don't know if it's God's will. There's a whole sect of Christianity that don't believe in healing, but they do say this. God will heal if it's his will. When I quote them in scripture that it's God's will, they said, yeah, but it's his decision. So there's always the yeah, buts. When I find people, all they say is, yeah, but I've got a congregation of goats. Yeah, but this, yeah, but that. Never an amen, just yeah, but, yeah, but. 